Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of the estimate of revenue and expenditure for 2023-2024 in the amount of 1,894,111,800 dollars as presented by the Minister for Finance, which, is, which we are now discussing and debating that's what I said, 110,800 as presented by the Honorable Member. First of all, Mr. Speaker, let me give thanks to the Almighty for his grace and mercy. I want to thank this afternoon my constituent, the Supra Fosheshak, for their confidence and for their support. Mr. Speaker, I want to place on record my thanks to, to the Honorable Prime Minister and to my cabinet colleagues for the continued support and for our focus on committing to improving the lives of the people of St. Lucia. I think, Mr. Speaker, when I decided to be a candidate for the St. Lucia Labour Party, that decision was critical for me. The purpose of the team. And the purpose, Mr. Speaker, from Dr. Anthony to now the member for Castries East is the focus of improving the lives of the people of St. Lucia. And for me, this is the singular purpose for being in politics, to serve the people and to improve the lives of the people of St. Lucia. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, I want to place on record my gratitude to my permanent secretary, the staff of the Ministry of Commerce, the CEOs of the allied agencies that fall under my ministry, which are Export St. Lucia, St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, the Free Zone, and their respective staff members, Mr. Speaker. I also want to thank the various private sector bodies um, that I work with, and they are the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, the St. Lucia Manufacturers Association, the St. Lucia Small Business Association, the Vendors Association, the Fashion Council, and the National Consumers Association. I also want to place on record my thanks to my constituents, and especially, Mr. Speaker, the men and women of the Sufre Police Station, the men and women of the Sufre fire service, the doctors, nurses, and staff of the Soufre Hospital, the Etangs and Fonchenjac Health Centers, the teachers at our various schools, secondary, primary, infant, and preschoolers, the executive and members of the Soufre constituency group, the staff, the, the chairman, board members, and staff of the Soufre Regional Development Foundation, the mayor, council, and staff of the Sufra Constituency Council, the management and staff of the Piton Management Area, the management and staff of the Sufra Marine Management Association, the business community in Sufra, especially our hoteliers for their support in community development, youth and sports, especially in Chasne, Jane Mountain. So Mr. Speaker, back to the business at hand. Once again, Mr. Speaker, I come before you, indeed before the citizens of our beloved country and my constituents of Soufre Fosheshak as we seek to comply with our obligation to lay the estimates of expenditure and revenue for the coming fiscal year 2024-2025. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, I come to account for my stewardship over the resources that has been entrusted to me and my ministry and 
also as a parliamentary rep for Sufre for Sheshan. I also want to speak on the previous financial year 2023 as well as to present a synopsis of the projects and initiatives which will comprise the work program for my ministry and constituent over the new financial year 2024-2025. In this regard, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to note that the Minister of Commerce at page 233 and 234 of these estimates was assigned some $17,240,000 to implement its work program over the fiscal year. Of this amount, 12,688,000 has been provided to fund recurring expenditure relating to the operations as well as project related recurrent activities. This includes an additional $1,640,200 to manage the implementation of five projects being undertaken by the Ministry, of which I will elaborate on subsequently. Mr. Speaker, with respect to the capital expenditure, some $4,552,000, and that is appearing on pages 233 and 234 of the project, of the estimates, has been programmed for this financial year, for four projects, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I think I want to put this in the context of the mission of my ministry. And that mission is, Mr. Speaker, to actively promote and facilitate, together with the private sector, the establishment of a dynamic business environment, which anticipates changes in global circumstances, while strengthening and enhancing the productive capacity and competitiveness of industry and commerce, engaging good business practices and consumer interests. You may recall, Mr. Speaker, that in 2023, global inflation allowed a downward trajectory was still above pre-COVID levels. And at that point, inflation was at 6.3%, Mr. Speaker. So all the information that we have now and the figures that we have, I want us to put this into context. Mr. Speaker, under the head 031, Enterprise Development, Mr. Speaker, and we speak there on our small enterprise development unit, we've been assigned $6,182,747 dollars, Mr. Speaker. Of which $3,750,462, which is project code 0394, has been programmed from, for our MSME loan grant facility under the management of SEDU, which is charged with providing support and business facilitation services to our MSMEs. Mr. Speaker, our MSME program, which is a flagship program for the ministry, we will di discuss in a lot more detail during the second part on the policy statement, Mr. Speaker. But I want to note that so far, based on the figures that we've received, we have received 514 applications, Mr. Speaker, under the MSME loan grant program. And I must take a moment to give a breakdown of application by constituency, and I think that is important. It's important because, Mr. Speaker, the second calling for this MSME loan program uh, will be the 2nd of April this year. So I really want members to listen to the numbers and to see what work you have to do on the ground to ensure that your members do benefit from that program. So leading the way is Rosilea with 99 applications. Sufre 61. <laughs> Sufre 61, Mr. Speaker. And then we go on to Answer Canaries 20. Babono 32. 
Castri Central 14, Castri East 31, Castri South 43, Castri South East 39, Swazel 27, Denry North 19, Denry South 7, Labry 15, Miku North 20, Miku South 12, Viewfort North 24, and Viewfort South 16, Mr. Speaker. And the applications by sector, Mr. Speaker, Agriculture 61, Agro Processing 39, Agro Tourism 10, Beauty and Wellness 51, Creative Industries 50, ICT 13, Manufacturing 71, Professional Services 81, Restaurants 25, and we have miscellaneous of 112. So, Mr. Speaker, from the first tranche, we have disbursed $3.296 million, Mr. Speaker, and 204 applicants have actually received those monies, Mr. Speaker. I am saying this again, Mr. Speaker. I know that there are quite a few persons who have applied and have not received, and I'm telling them that we are in the process of ensuring that we communicate with each person so that if for some reason the application was denied, we can work with them to see whether they get into the second calling. Mr. Speaker, within the program, I want to speak on some of the other programs within our ministry, Mr. Speaker. On the code 0325, and that is page 236, we received some $156,640 for our Small Business Development Center, Young Entrepreneurs in Action, our YEA program. Mr. Speaker, when we compare this amount to what we received last year, last year we received $65,200, which is an increase of 131%, Mr. Speaker. Last year, we were able to have 40 students under this program, Mr. Speaker. So with this increase, we are hoping to increase the number of persons participating to 100 with this coming year. Mr. Speaker, on the commerce and industry, some of the other programs that we have here, we have what you call our Love St. Lucia campaign, and on, so thank you, project code 0452, page 236, Mr. Speaker, we received some EC $80,000 to assist us in that campaign, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this particular project is extremely important for us because what it does, it is focus on trying to get St. Lucians to buy local, Mr. Speaker. And when we see what is happening in the world as it relates to trade, it is extremely important that we raise the consciousness of our people that they support our local entrepreneurs, Mr. Speaker. So this program, although it only has received $80,000, we really want to stretch that program and to raise the consciousness of St. Lucians that we need to support local. It is only when we support our local entrepreneurs that this economy is going to grow. Mr. Speaker, another aspect of commerce and industry um, that we have, and that is on project code 0395, where we have received EC $136,098, is our digital enhancement program, Mr. Speaker. Um, this program is a three-year program, and we are in year three of the program, Mr. Speaker, but it is a program again that is extremely important to us because as commerce changes 
we need to ensure that our small business persons embrace the di digital technology, that we embrace e-commerce, Mr. Speaker, because with e-commerce, the world becomes the marketplace. And we are doing quite a bit, and I want to take this moment there to thank the Embassy of China, Taiwan, for the significant support that we presented to the ministry in terms of trying to work with our small business persons to ensure that they embrace technology. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on the Department of Consumer Affairs, and that is uh, on page 245, I am pleased that we have received an increase for our National Consumers Association, Mr. Speaker. Um, for the past 13 years, they've received an annual subvention of $25,000. And this year, I want to thank the Minister for Finance for increasing this amount to $65,000, Mr. Speaker. Um, the adverse effect of worldwide inflation on consumers are evident in the escalating cost of vital commodities, including food, transport, and utilities. And in light of this, there is significant work to be done, both by the Consumer Affairs Department in my ministry and by the National Consumers Association, so that we can engage the consumers, talk about inflation, and what it is that we can do differently to stretch our dollar, Mr. Speaker. So I want to take this moment to thank the National Consumers Association for some of the um, appearances that they've made on television. Uh, they've actually got into a program, there's a talk show where they come in and provide explanation to the people. So I want to thank them, Mr. Speaker. So I move now, Mr. Speaker, to our government supply warehouse. And Mr. Speaker, on page 235, project code 0535, there is an allocation of $1 million, Mr. Speaker. And this million dollars, Mr. Speaker, is an effort to um, get a new location for the government warehouse, Mr. Speaker. The current um, location, there are significant challenges with the current location um, in terms of size, in terms of protection of the products that we have. So we are really trying to see whether we can move on to the valley, um, where we can get a larger place, where, because we're having challenges, Mr. Speaker, in terms of um, our suppliers getting off 20-foot um, containers to 40-foot containers. So it is in the interest of the public that we get the largest place, that we can do a lot more stocking of the items that we have and protect it. So that is the purpose of this, Mr. Speaker. And while we speak on that, Mr. Speaker, I know later on in the policy debate, we will have a lot of conversation in terms of availability of rice, flour, and sugar. But I want to put on our record that this government, for 2023-24, Mr. Speaker, subsidized those basic commodities to the tune of $11.5 million, Mr. Speaker. That is important, $11.5 million. That's the subsidy for rice, flour, and sugar by this government. So I want this to be placed on record, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, on the Division 032, Mr. Speaker, on page 238, you will also see there is an amount of $75,000 there. And the purpose of this amount, Mr. Speaker, is to see, explore whether statutorization of the warehouse is a viable option for us as a government. So that is the $75,000 provision there, so we can get a consultant and do the work that is required to come up with a solution for the warehouse. Mr. Speaker, on page 245, Division 090, there is a provision for $150,000, Mr. Speaker, and the purpose of this amount is for a southern extension of the Ministry of Commerce, Mr. Speaker. 
we made a commitment to the business people in Beaufort that we will be opening an office and I am grateful that we now have a provision here for $150,000. We have identified a place and we are working with the Ministry of the Public Service, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that the Ministry of Commerce has a presence in Beaufort Town. Mr. Speaker, I move to the Department of Cooperatives and Mr. Speaker, under the Department of Cooperatives, I am pleased that we have a provision on the head 0454 for $275,000, Mr. Speaker. But first let me report on what, how, how we use the monies that we had for 2023-2024, Mr. Speaker. For 23-24, Mr. Speaker, our non-financial cooperatives made strides and with the monies we received, we were able to assist three cooperatives, Mr. Speaker, and they were Ansari, Soufre, and Denry Fisherman Cooperatives, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and we assisted with the installation of energy efficient equipment, air conditioning units, um, and also, for example, Sufre received an ice machine, Mr. Speaker. So now we have received another $275,000, Mr. Speaker, and I believe we have four cooperatives uh, who are going to benefit from this um, particular tranche, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. The, the member for Viewfort South wants to know which four, Mr. Speaker. So let me see if I can. Yeah. The um. Yeah. The number. The um. We are going to deal with solarization of Fisher cooperatives. Um. I was just trying to see where I have that. I'll come back to it, member, and I will inform you. But I also want to say, Mr. Speaker, that I want to thank the Minister for Equity and the Minister for Agriculture, Mr. Speaker. So, because my ministry, working with their ministry, have been able to assist some 89 of our members of cooperatives with benefiting from having access to the COVID. 19 pandemic um, support of $1,500, Mr. Speaker. Um, so some 89 of our, of our cooperative members will be receiving the $1,500. So I want to, to thank members for this. Um, you're trying to check something, Mr. Speaker? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Mr. Speaker, while I wait for that information, Export St. Lucia I want to speak about our national export strategy, which is a critical issue, Mr. Speaker, for St. Lucia. And I am pleased that on, the, on page 245, Division 090, some $92,000 was provided for us to facilitate the appointment of a coordinator to implement our national export strategy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is one responsibility that has been given to, to me and to the Ministry of Commerce by the Honorable Prime Minister, and that responsibility is to um, commence an industry with the cannabis, cannabis industry, Mr. Speaker. And we have done significant work in that regard, Mr. Speaker. Um, but I want to bring you to page 236 on the project code 0453, where there is some $800,000, Mr. Speaker. And 
that this amount, Mr. Speaker, has been placed there to fund the operation of the regulated substance authority, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we started working on the cannabis um, the issue of the cannabis bill, Mr. Speaker, we found it necessary after much discussion and research to come first before this Honorable House with a regulated substance authority bill, Mr. Speaker, which was passed in this Honorable House. Thank you. Which was passed in this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker. So now I am pleased that we have some EC $800,000 in the budget so that this authority um, will have the, will come into being, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I must tell you that uh, a board has been appointed and just last week, Mr. Speaker, we went further to having what we call a Caribbean Cannabis Symposium so that we can focus on the second part of the issue, which is to finalize the cannabis bill, Mr. Speaker, and to see how we can, can bring this to fruition. So, Mr. Speaker, I believe, let me see. Sorry. So, Mr. Speaker, this, Mr. Speaker, is my reporting of the performance of my ministry. And now, with your guidance, Mr. Speaker, with your permission, Mr. Speaker, I will turn to my constituency. Um, Mr. Speaker, for 2023, my mission of working collaboratively with my constituents in transforming the constituents of Sufre for Sheshak continued with much vigor and passion. Our 2021 tagline, together let us transform Sufre for Sheshak, remain more relevant today than yesterday. So, Mr. Speaker, for the year under review, the constituency of Sufre Fonchejac, sorry, received much help from our community development program, which is the CDP, Mr. Speaker. And what I'm going to do now, Mr. Speaker, with your permission, is to report on how we used our CDP last year, and then to say what we propose to do in addition to some of the other items under the budget head, how we are going to implement them, Mr. Speaker. So I will do this under the subheading Infrastructural Development, Educational and Skills Development Program, Agricultural Development, Housing Improvement, Business Development, Community and Cultural Development, Tourism Development, economic development. Mr. Speaker, I will attempt to give details of each program executed in the constituency under the CDP. And most of them, Mr. Speaker, I had to get support with, from other funders. Infrastructural development. The following projects are undertaken. Some are still in progress. And I would say, Mr. Speaker, at the beginning, we focused on safety of our people. And we started at the, in Mini Fonchejac, an area that is very prone to landslide. And we did extensive infrastructural and drainage work in Mini Fonchejac, Mr. Speaker. Then we move on with the help again from the Ministry of Infrastructure. We did the installation of guardrails on the Fonchejac main road 
on the Sufra main road, Sufra Castries main road, and part of the Fort Saint Jacques um, road to Myers Bridge, Mr. Speaker. Because knowing Sufra, we had quite a few areas that are very precarious, and we felt we needed to do this. So I want to take this moment to thank the member for Castries North, Mr. Speaker, for facilitating these infrastructural works. Mr. Speaker, we move to three. We focus on recreation and wellness. We did the renovation of the Fort Benier Park. Phase one is completed, and phase two will start shortly. We went on to the construction of the new development park, outdoor gym, and again, phase one has commenced with support from the NIC, we provided the equipment for the gym and some funding. And phase two, Mr. Speaker, will be funded by the, phase two will be funded from CDP, Mr. Speaker. Construction of a free classroom structure at the SCSS, Mr. Speaker, and that was funded through the support of the Minister for Finance, Mr. Speaker. We had the renovation of a wing of the Sufra Primary School, and that, Mr. Speaker, was done through the Ministry of Equity under the BNTF program, Mr. Speaker. Um, we had the renovation of the food and nutrition room at the SCSS, Mr. Speaker, and that was funded with CDP and with some support from Anshasne, Jade Mountain, Mr. Speaker. And on the community development, we constructed a community center at Bouton, and there we use CDP funding, Mr. Speaker. And this year, God willing, with the, under the CDP program, we will be purchasing the furniture and equipment for that center, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, let me just interrupt this to reply to the the member for Viewfort, <laughs> for Viewfort South. So uh, the works, Mr. Um, Honorable Member, Free Societies, Goodwill, Fishermen, Property for Grosile. Library, Fishers, a new fishing complex, in Miku, and where is Vufort now? The project will also address electrical work and preliminary repairs at Goodwill Fisherman Cooperative. That's Vufort. Vufort South. So are you a little happier with me now? You see? <laughs> So yes, so it's Vufort, Grosile, in <laughs> library. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, back to constituency work. You are most welcome, member. Educational and skills development program, Mr. Speaker. Again, using CDP funds, we instituted an after-school program in collaboration with the Sufra Regional Development Foundation. And there are some 80 children are benefiting. And they are from Sufra, Fosajak, Itangs. From my CDP. <laughs> my CDP, I mean, each time I look at the CDP, I, I just ask the Lord to bless it, just as he, he blessed the bread. And that's what I do. I put a little, I multiply that, the Lord multiplies that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when I think in terms of education, I think of the back to school assistance that was provided to our students, and, and that was done through Ministry of Equity, where 462 students um, got assistance at back to school. Parents received some $300 if they had one child. $500 for two children, and three, if they have three or more, they receive some $700, Mr. Speaker. 
under the S with the SSDF this came to about $150,600 and in addition to that Mr. Speaker through the SRDF which is the Super Regional Development Foundation an additional 281 students received back to school assistance again totaling some $229,395 Mr. Speaker so, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying all of this to say that on the head 51, with some $55 million, I look forward for some similar support for my students for this coming year, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, on the education, on the, my, using my CDP again, train some 21 young men and two ladies. They receive training to become certified boat captains, Mr. Speaker. That's important for us, Mr. Speaker. So some of those persons, what we're doing now is to help them apply for support under the youth program, the um, youth economy program, Mr. Speaker, and to see where we can help them start and become owners of their own boats. Mr. Speaker, on the education again, with CDP and with the help of Cabot Cares, we trained some 40 young persons registered in accounting course 101, Mr. Speaker. 26 participants were successful in the accounting course, and they have now moved um, to start another course called consumer, customer service and critical thinking, Mr. Speaker. And the objective of this training program is to prepare our unemployed persons to see how they can get employment. We now have a new business process management company in Sufre, and we are hoping our strategy is to work and train those persons to prepare them for work. So again, Mr. Speaker, my CDP is being multiplied. Mr. Yeah? Tenfold, Mr. Speaker. I put a drop there and then I go out and see who can help me. On the area of agriculture, Mr. Speaker, again, using CDP, we provided greenhouse and seed funding to Bellevue Cooperative, Mr. Speaker. Um, this cooperative has, um, it was once a very vibrant cooperative. Um, a greenhouse, yes. yeah. Um, Bellevue Cooperative was a critical um, institution for Region 8, Mr. Speaker, and when you look at where it's at, um, it has, it's in trouble. So my challenge now is to use the CDP to work with my colleague minister and minister in the Ministry of Agriculture to see how best we can breathe new life in the Bellevue Cooperative, Mr. Speaker. So we've provided them with assistance, we've given them a greenhouse. Export St. Lucia is working with them to see how best we can renovate the chill room for them, Mr. Speaker. Um, all, of, all towards food security. Agriculture again, Mr. Speaker. Um, presentation of fertilizer and chicken manure to my Fosche Jack farmers, Mr. Speaker. Again, through CDP and again through partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. We have done market research, Mr. Speaker, and through CDP we are working to ensure that we increase the production of dashing in the Fosche Jack area. And what we have done, we have delivered to the first 12 farmers that were ready some $1,500 each to support them, Mr. Speaker, in terms of ex expanding the dashing production. And Mr. Speaker, I need to tell you that based on further research that we have done, we, are, we have identified an additional 34 farmers who are going to receive, who are now ready to receive additional funds of $1,500 each so that dashing cultivation in Fauchajac is at a different level so that the markets that we have identified um, we will meet it and that our, the lives of our farmers would improve. 
Mr. Speaker, and I think I've mentioned that, that with the help of the ministry, my ministry, we have replaced the ice machine at the Sufra Fishers Cooperatives, Mr. Speaker. So housing improvement, Mr. Speaker, 2023-2024, we handed over, with the help of the Ministry of Housing and Local Government, we handed over deeds to the occupants of the Mocha houses. And this exercise continues, Mr. Speaker. We rely on the Ministry of Housing and Local Government, but what we do is to ensure that this has happened. Mr. Speaker, again under that program, we were able to provide and improve the roofing at the Palmis project, housing project. Some 82 homes um, it were impacted, Mr. Speaker. That's the Palmis housing project. We also went to the next part of the, of the Palmis estate and we, what we call the Black, Blackstone section, Mr. Speaker. And that section, believe it or not, still had asbestos. And Mr. Speaker, with um, the support of the Honorable Prime Minister and with support from my CDP, we were able to remove the asbestos shingles from all the houses in that area, both for Palmis and for the Market Road residents. So now, Mr. Speaker, I breathe a sign of relief that my constituents of Palmis and my constituents of Market Road Sufre do not reside in houses still covered with asbestos. With the help of this government, we were able to give them a new roof. Again on the housing, Mr. Speaker, Emma Kes. Hmm. Barons Drive, Mr. Speaker, uh, Barons Drive, we know that the uh, stalwarts of this support for this administration and Mr. Speaker, we started our home repair program in the Barons Drive area. So far, we have touched at least 23 homes there and the work continues. So I want to take this moment to thank both the Minister for Finance and the Minister for Housing and Local Government for this critical program, Mr. Speaker. But I want to tell you, like others, that the list of names, persons asking for support is endless. And this is always a challenge to determine who you're helping first because they are all in need, Mr. Speaker. So I'm really hoping we can get a lot more support under that project. Mr. Speaker, on the business development, again, using my little CDP, Mr. Speaker, I was able to establish the Sufre Vendors Association. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> we didn't know how to split it. <laughs> We established the Sufre Vendors Association, Mr. Speaker. They started with 91 members, and now they are just about 150 members. Most of them women, Mr. Speaker. And they received some seed monies. Some have not received, but the first 91 have received. Each of them received some $700, Mr. Speaker. $500 coming from our, my CDP allocation and $200 coming from the Sufra Regional Development Foundation. We are getting technical support from the Foshaja Credit Union, Mr. Speaker. And I want to take this moment to thank the Ministry of Tourism that has come in and provide training to those persons, Mr. Speaker. Again, on the business development, Mr. Speaker, um, through my ministry, through my office in Sufra, we assisted over... Member for Sufre for Sejak, you have 15 minutes. 15. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We, have, we assisted some 50 persons in preparing their business plans, Mr. Speaker. And I'm happy to report, as I've said, that some 61 persons applied. On the community and cultural development, Mr. Speaker, the Sufre Carnival, I want again... At the beginning, we had certain challenges, Mr. Speaker. 
but we know that it was a success. Suffragas, a stellar act, Mr. Speaker. I want to take the moment to thank Mr. Samoje, the Sufra Events Committee. Samoje, Mephodias Rox Plessin, Julian Matrin, and the team for this, Mr. Speaker, for the hard work they do in ensuring that Sufra provide first class services in terms of events hosting, Mr. Speaker. I also want to recognize the work that we did on the Creole Heritage Month, Mr. Speaker. And for the first time, we brought the entire community. Uh, we had activities in all the communities, Barons Ride, Fonchon Lib, Zenon, Bouton, Chateau Belay, Souffre Town. And again, I want to thank that team and Ms. Krishna and Bryce who headed it and Glenja Charles for embracing culture. Within that as well, Mr. Speaker, we brought in an item that is a legacy item for us, and that is Kudme Soufrié, where we brought the community together, and they went into construction of homes, cleaning of health center, um, painting of cemetery walls, planting of flowers, road repair, erection of road safety barriers. Young, old, I see members, yellow, red. We brought the community together, Mr. Speaker. And I, we want us to have this every year as a legacy program where we bring the community into self-help. I want to recognize the work that was done in Fonche Jacques, Mr. Speaker, where persons like Mrs. Sandra Prosper and her team at the Fonche Jacques Development Committee, they brought in another project as well, Jeunesse Creole which is a pageant that we want to have every year, where we are trying to get the young people to embrace our culture, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank, on the area of tourism, I want to thank um, the member for Castries South and his permanent secretary for completing the Palmis booth, Mr. Speaker, to enable the operators to run this, Mr. Speaker. Under the area of youth development, Mr. Speaker, um, hosting of the job fair, Mr. Speaker, supporting our footballers, Mr. Speaker, they've made us proud in terms of being the black hat champions, Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell them today that we are committed, I'm committed to working with them to ensure that sports is alive and well in Sufre, Mr. Speaker. I want to take this moment to thank the coaches and the volunteers for the work that they do day after day with our youth. So, Mr. Speaker, the work to be initiated this year, when I look again under the CDP and I've raised it, I want to get into infrastructure and deal with the Eton slope stabilization. And I notice infrastructure on the head 43, that provision is made for this. It's very dangerous and we must address it urgently. And more than anything else, Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about my roads. The roads at Smith Street, Fonchon Jacques de Wash, Crestland, Fonchon Jacques to Myers Bridge, Fonchon Jacques Main Road, Chateau Belay, Don Feebles Road, Lenny Hill, Mini Fonchon Jacques, Belvidere Fonchon Jacques, Chateau Belay, Fonchon Libre, Upper Victoria Street, Boisdain to Belfont. Roads in new development, upper and lower new development. The Bouton Road, the Riverside Road next to the library, Barons Drive Road to Margaret Toots, Fon Benny Road, Bay Street. All of this, Mr. Speaker, are roads that require significant attention, Mr. Speaker. And I am hoping and I I've received the commitment of the Honorable Member for Castries North. Member, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, that he is going to cast an eye and see how best we can get some reprieve, Mr. Speaker. For other areas that we need, Mr. Speaker, the completion of the Bouton Colobet Water Project. Again, it is part of infrastructure. Um, the, for Bhutto again, the Bhutto bus stop and lay-by, Mr. Speaker. 
under the community development program a community center in chateau belair mr speaker um, for infrastructure on the head 56 improvement to road electrification throughout the constituency we've developed we have conducted an audit mr speaker and we need almost 300 lamps in the constituency so we've passed that information on mr speaker um, for barons drive on the cdp mr speaker um, a learning center for the people of barons drive renovation of the it center again on the cdp and i want some collaboration there with the minister for education on that area mr speaker for Sufre, I wait the project with GPH, Mr. Speaker, because of the impact it's going to have on the lives of my people. On the head 56 Department of Economic Affairs, Mr. Speaker, I welcome the construction for the new hospital, Mr. Speaker. This is an area that my constituency has been screaming for, and I really hope um that we can really commence it this year mr speaker in the area of agriculture under head 41 i want to thank the member for denry south for his support thus far and to thank him for our the additional fact that we're going to give our fishers and uh, additional support for our dashing farmers and some support as well for additional support for bellevue Corp because they really need it I also would look forward to some water tanks for my livestock farmers, fertilizer again for my farmers, my farmers, my farmers, member. So under the head 46, which is tourism, Mr. Speaker, I am hoping that we can get our Torai vending booth and the construction of the viewing point near at Mount Kubarel, Mr. Speaker. On the housing improvement on the head 48, I see $1.78 million there, Mr. Speaker. And the main thing there is the continuation of the home repair program, Mr. Speaker. In the area of youth development and sport, head 54, um, where I see some $12.6 million, Mr. Speaker. I'm excited that the member for Rosile has given us some comfort that some sporting infrastructure will receive some attention, Mr. Speaker. My sportsmen and women are expecting and I'm requesting on their behalf installation of lights on the Fosheja Court, um, construction of Zeno, multi Zeno Multipurpose Court, additional seating for Sufra Stadium, introduction of netball in Sufre, as well as alternative sports. I want to thank the member, Mr. Um, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the member for the significant support that he has provided to Sufre so far. And you know what is good for Sufre is good for canneries as well as Suzel. So we are, we are in between pulling the two constituencies with us. So Thank you again, member, for the work that you're doing here. We are really hoping that we can get a place for our cricketers, and that is where I'm, I'm crying with free eyes, Mrs. Speaker. <laughs> our cricketers, you know, they were doing well, and now we have difficulty in identifying a space for them to practice. Mr. Speaker, for our youth, I want to thank um, the SRG, SSBF for the social survey that they've conducted for us. We are hoping in the coming weeks to sit and discuss it. But one key thing that we're trying to do, Mr. Speaker, is to initiate what we call a Project Hope to provide mentorship. Remember you have five minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To provide mentorship, job training, and seed money to our young people to give them a helping hand so that they can change and transform their lives, Mr. Speaker. In the area of digitization, Mr. Speaker, I 
I'm working and I'm pleased to report that we are installing a community-wide Wi-Fi program in Sufre, Mr. Speaker. That is significant for us to ensure that, yes, all our people can access Wi-Fi, especially on our visitors, Mr. Speaker. We are saying that Sufre is different and forward-thinking. I'm also hoping that we can install a modern and state-of-the-art computers at the Sufre IT Center, Mr. Speaker. The flooring is gone, so again, I'll have to stretch my CDP to see how we can restore that. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to, I see on the head 21, the distress fund. I have some of my fissures that the boats got damaged after the high seas there. And I have some of my fissures, the house got burned, so I'll be coming to the minister, the member for Castries East, to see how I can bring some comfort to those persons, Mr. Speaker. And finally, Mr. Speaker, our elderly, they have served us well, and I am working again for my CDP and some community persons to see how best we can start and construct a seniors daycare for the seniors of Sufre. They've worked, and a lot of them at their homes without the right food, without um, person's companionship, and I believe that we should do that so that they can have something to eat, have a place to recreate, and then they can go home at their, they can go to their homes in the evening. So Mr. Speaker, in closing, I endorse this estimate of revenue and expenditure. And I pray God for the strength and stamina for our Prime Minister and our Cabinet colleagues to deliver to the people of this country what is contained in this document. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.